Hey, welcome back to my Permanently Filipino playlist where I basically talk about the transition that my husband and I made from the United States to the Philippines as retirees to become permanent residents. So all of my previous videos, I pretty much touch on a little bit here and there about wanting to become a dual citizen. And part of that process is number one, getting not only my birth certificate, but then my birth mother's birth certificate. And to um, review, back in January 2021, I was still in the United States. I needed my birth certificate. At the time, I'd never seen, I mean, I was in my 50s, I'd never seen my birth certificate. Um, and honestly, didn't even know I could get a copy of it. With some research, I found out I just needed to go onto the PSA Cerbillis website and um, apply for one. It costs between $20 and $30. I needed a FedEx account, which you will then have to input that information into the website. So then I received my birth certificate in 15 days and it expires in five years. So my experience with PSA Cerbillis was a really easy one to get a copy of my birth certificate. In November 2023, the Bureau of Immigration Intramuris basically told me I could not become a dual citizen because my birth certificate did not have my birth mother's birth date. Had a lot of other information about her, but not her birth date, which still perplexes me. <laughs> I'm not really quite sure why, but it didn't. So I went online again to see if I could, if I could just type in her name and maybe from there, then maybe have other options to find her birth date. And that didn't work. You need your birth mother's or birth father's name and birth dates to be able to move forward to get a copy of their birth certificate, which completely makes sense. Um, so when the Bureau of, In when the Bureau of Immigration Intramuris told me that I needed my birth mother's birth date, I could not get it online. I decided I will just go to PSA Cerbillas. I'm in the Philippines. I'm in Manila. Let's just take care of this. So first thing you have to do is schedule an appointment online. Um, super easy. And then on the day of your appointment, uh, my husband and I took a grab and when you, you just see all these buildings and people milling about and a, a bunch of vendors everywhere and it's crazy busy, confusing, and you really don't know which building where you should go in. <laughs> a little bit like the LTO experience, very similar at first. Um, but there's always friendly people. The guards are super helpful. And they guided us over to um, a huge building and it looked, we had to go to the ground level and it looked like you were entering into um, a parking garage. And once you enter in this open area, again, you still see a bunch of people milling about, um, either they're seated or they're standing over at these um, high tops with uh, filling out paperwork. Um, there are guards around. You also see towards the front where the chairs are facing, um, like tables and I'm assuming representatives at the time, I was assuming representatives that were helping the people. And there, there was a, as you're seeing people seated in the chairs, I'm thinking it's a huge queue, like a very long queue. Um, so <laughs> the level of confusion is pretty high at first, but in reality, it was super easy. Um, I didn't know enough Tagalog to be able to read the signage, but fortunately um, a guard helped us 
and we went to one of those tabletops and received a small slip of paper where you put in um, basic information about yourself and your intentions. Why are you there? And then also I think uh, you might have had to indicate if you had an appointment or not, which I did. And then after you fill out the piece of paper, at first I thought I had to sit um, in one of the chairs or I tried to find where there was, um, where I had to get a number. And instead I just went up to the table. I mean, filling out the paperwork and going up to the table and talking to somebody, one of the representatives took five minutes. So <laughs> my initial feeling impressions when I first walked into the building of absolute confusion and feeling overwhelmed, it was gone in five minutes. It wasn't any big deal. Um, not only did I have to, since I had to write everything on the form, I did also explain um, in English what, it, what my intentions were. And to ensure they understood, I did not have my birth mother's birth date. So I'm sure that That determined where I was going to go. Um, so the representative sent me into another building. I think it was another building. I can't remember. I don't think it was the same building. I think it was another building. And I had, to, you go up the stairs, you go into the building, and then you go up another set of stairs. So it's the second floor of this building. Modern, beautiful building. Um, and when you walk into the building initially it's this huge lobby area and of course there's guards and you could see people but it's a very large space not many people are in this space and then you see stairs on either side of the lobby going to the second floor and once you get onto the second floor again you're overwhelmed with chairs <laughs> but many of them were empty um, and I'm sure because most people were waiting outside and I, I'm starting to learn, that was my first time starting to see um, when you go to m many um, government agencies, you're waiting outside. So bring a fan, <laughs> like one of those, um, or electric fan or a handheld fan, I don't care. Bring a book to read if you have to wait, but you're waiting outside. So, But by the time you get into the building, your um, wait isn't as long. I know when I talked about MBI, um, that's gonna be a little bit of a different story, but at PSA Servilis, the wait wasn't that long. But to go back to describing the second floor, you'll see a lot of chairs, and in the chairs are facing all these teller windows. And it's very similar to LTO, um, where they're numbered or they have some type of information so you know most likely which window you're going to go to based on your your needs okay so that's when you first walk into walk upstairs at the top of um, at the set on the second floor when I turn to my left then I see a line of chairs that were along the railing along with the other chairs similar to what you see um, all along, oh, all over the floor. But then there's these small offices. So these, this line of chairs here was basically like the waiting queue for these small offices. And that's where I had to go. And again, um, as soon as I sat in the chair, boom, they called me into the office. So that was like a minute. So far, I've maybe, between walking and um, filling out paperwork, talking to representatives, it's now taken a total of 10 minutes of my life. I, I'm in the seat, I'm talking to um, a representative there and explaining my situation um, and come to find out, because I do not have a copy of, or any evidence of my birth mother's birth, um, birth date, I cannot get a birth certificate. But 
the one thing about my situation is so unique is that um, I explained my entire scenario about um, being adopted, becoming naturalized, wanting to become a dual citizen, um, seeing that the lack of information on my birth certificate, you know, there were some uh, complex situations here. It was it's complicated. So the representative, after talking to me for about three minutes, sent me to another building where you have, they have um, their lawyers and other legal representatives. Now, I did not talk to a lawyer when I went into that building, but I did talk to a legal representative. So when we walked to that building, again, uh, you can walk in and we had to wait downstairs to see if they had somebody available for us. Um, so the guard, when you first enter our now third building, um, you just have to wait a little bit. And I think our wait, that might have been our longest wait. Number one was downstairs. And then again, when we were allowed to go up to the next floor, the second floor, our wait took maybe about 15 to 30 minutes. And I'm sure it was trying to, sorry, <laughs> I'll be right back. Salazada. At na uulan ito. So, mm, okay. I am so sorry. I, this video is going to have to be piecemeal because I am not going to do another video on top of this. So, it is what it is. So sorry. Okay, sige po. All right. So, I'm at, we're, the longest wait so far for the entire day was waiting for a legal representative. Okay. And that might have taken 30 minutes. And maybe we just had shown up at a bad time. Maybe it was Tanghali. I have no idea. I don't remember. I just know it was 30 minutes, but honestly, it wasn't that big deal because everything else just took less than a minute wait. So we didn't care. Again, always bring a fan, a book to read or something if you have to wait. So when the representative finally came again, I had to explain my story and the complications and why my birth certificate, not why, but I questioned why my birth certificate did not have my birth mother's birth date. It had everything else but that. So, um, the legal rep didn't know. So of course then he had to leave and then he was gone for maybe 15, 20 minutes um, because he wasn't a lawyer, but he, he definitely was, um, he hadn't taken his bar exam yet, but he was super nice and super informative and gave us some um, great advice, which of course, hard headed me <laughs> decided, um, uh, we're going to use this information because I'm going to keep trying for my dual citizenship. Okay, so here's the information he said. Because my birth certificate did not have my birth mother's birth date. He said that there were other things that I could do to possibly obtain it. So he said, now I'm gonna have to read. He said, I'm gonna have to do my own investigation on my birth mother. And I know my husband has said to me multiple times, oh, there's somebody on YouTube who does that, and helps people find, you know, their birth parents. And I'm not up to that point yet. Uh, my birth mother would be in her 70s. But it intrigues me. I will say that. It intrigues me. But anyway, our, the advice we received was, um, Yes, investigate on our own um, about my birth mother, to visit the hospital where I was born, to go to the barangay where she lived, because both of those two pieces of information were listed on my birth certificate. Um, when I'm in the uh, Kapitbahai, 
uh, or um, the bar barangay, uh, see if relatives lived in the area or if neighbors could assist me, or I could just go to her birthplace. So I was born in Angeli City, but that is not where she was born. She worked there, but she was not born there. Um, I will say the as as the legal rep was telling me ways to do my own investigative work. Um, that was maybe the first time. I think I started crying in front of somebody who was not my husband because um, I wasn't sure if I had the fortitude to do all of that. I um, didn't know, I mean, I'm already not using um, resources to go on a vacation. <laughs> and I've already been told multiple times that I'm not going to get a, to get dual citizenship because of A through Z. I pretty much have gone through the entire alphabet, um, but I'm stubborn. And I still have a glimmer of hope thinking I can do something or I can find somebody to help me. But I did take a few minutes to be a little emotional because um, I'm not, I don't handle no very well. <laughs> I don't. Um, my husband would attest to that. So despite the disappointing news, um, I felt all the feels and decided I was going to take some time to decide what I was going to do next. And upcoming videos will talk about all of the steps that I took as I'm trying to um, find more information about my mother and to really decide what is in the best interest for myself and my husband as we become permanent residents. So anyway, that's up to this point, PSA Cerbelas, my experience there. And um, if you have your birth date, no problem. <laughs> anyway, um, I think my next video is going to be about getting my ACR I-card. So, okay, fine. You're not going to let me become a dual citizen right now so i will become um i will receive an acri card because i have a bellic buy-in visa and i really just wanted something that represented that i was filipino on a card and i don't know that's what the next video is going to be about so anyway i will catch you later thanks for stopping by